So the thing I enjoyed most about playing for the Express um, was really the way that you were treated as a player. Uh, obviously the stadium speaks for itself, but the way that you were treated, I mean, you felt like you were in the big leagues. You know, that's the biggest thing. When you're, when you're not from a town and you're playing there for, for a year, or even in, in my case for, you know, for three years, um, when, you're, you know, when you're treated like family, it makes just your playing experience you know, that much more rewarding. Yeah, I think it was first class. You know, it's through and through from, you know, the people that, uh, you know, the ushers to, you know, our fans to everybody, you know, we felt like we were big leaguers in double A. And so, you know, the way the, the Ryan family, you know, brought the players in and, and just treated them, you know, just like, you can't, you can't beat it. The boosters, we'd have, you know, team meals prior to getting on the bus and, you know, it, we'd have people waiting for us when we get back from road trips. So it was just a really, really unique exp uh, experience being in double A, but feeling like a big leaguer. I think it prepared you or when you did make it to the big leagues because you were treated that well. The camaraderie you get in the clubhouse, you're a family. You know, not everybody comes from the same place or has the same background or the same personality, but you have to come together to, to play as a team, especially in AAA knowing you're, you're so close. And when we had good teams going to the playoffs, then you really had to, to come together because you're trying to win something. So that, that's the best part. That's the part probably I miss um, the most when it comes to not playing baseball anymore. I miss the game, but the camaraderie, the clubhouse. What I enjoyed most about playing for the Express was just, they're just a first class organization. It was just so exciting to come home every time that you went on the road. You're, you know, you are, I'm back, and we're back in, in the, all the nice facilities and, and the way that they take care of the players. I mean, it's just, they go above and beyond, really. The fan base is so great. They really embrace our, the team there in Round Rock. So just some professionalism from top to bottom and how close knit everybody was from the front office to the you know to the coaching staff there to the ushers that worked at the stadium to the people that worked behind the concession stands you get to meet everybody everybody that works at the pool and the kids station to the ground screw guys we were all hanging out together with the players and we got to know everybody that worked in the stadium so it was one really big family back then I think just the family atmosphere, uh, especially you know getting to know Chris Almanderas, Tim Jackson, the rest of the, the Round Rock staff there. Um, you know they treated my, myself, my my wife, my family, my son. They treated everybody with a, you know, like like they were their own, and it, it was a special place to be. And it's definitely a place that uh, got a lot of great memories and and uh, hold hold very dear in my heart. Believe me, the uh, eight years that I spent here from 2000 to 2008 before I went to the Astros, my idea was that I was going to retire here and possibly move to Round Rock. And uh, so uh, sometimes you better be careful, you know, making your mind up too early because uh, it was probably the, overall the best eight years that I spent in baseball. It's, it's like a family. I mean, it, it's funny, but I mean, all the fans that come to the games and, and you know, we got in, uh, to meet a lot of the, the season ticket holders and hang out with them, and they'd ha they have a big barbecue out in the outfield, you know, out by the swimming pool, and the fans would be out there and put it on, and all the players would come out and, and mingle with them, and, and it was like you knew, you know, it was family. So it was, uh, it was just a great environment, and it was a lot of fun to be there, be part of it. You know, I think the organization took care of us, the staff took care of me as the manager, made it easy for me, uh, whether it was living arrangements, transportation, whatever whatever needs I had, they took care of everything, made my job so much easier to go to the ballpark and manage the ball club. Um, the family atmosphere, just what stands out most is how well they took care of me. I was just embraced and my family, my family who was there for the summer were embraced by each and every one of these uh, individuals in, 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 the, in the organization and that was something that that goes beyond words. It, it, you just feel so comfortable coming to the ballpark every day. And, and the franchise has had success because how they do things and how they treat people. They're a people-oriented franchise. It shows. It shows why the attendance is up every year. People want to come to that ballpark and enjoy the time. There's so many other things to do rather than just baseball, which is first and foremost, but the food, the, 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 the spectacular environment that they create. Best part about playing for the Express is, uh, I feel like it was, everybody's a family there. Everybody took care of each other. You know, the facilities were awesome, uh, had good coaching staff, great teammates, many good teammates. Um, played with a lot of guys that's come through there, but uh, two guys that stick out the most, probably Brett Nicholas and Jimmy Reyes. Uh, we came up all the way up through the minor leagues together, and uh, me and Brett ultimately made the big leagues together, 
and uh, just sharing all the ups and downs throughout the season and throughout a career, it's, uh, those two probably stick out the most. I think uh, through my years in Round Rock, uh, Jared Hoing and I were definitely uh, kind of kind of brothers going through it all. You know, we got there um, pretty much the same years. Um, spent a lot of time together. Spent a, uh, a lot of on the field, a lot of off the field time together. You know, kind of went through some similar stuff. And uh, Jared's definitely my brother from uh, from Round Rock. There were a few teammates and coaches I was I was uh, real close with in Round Rock. Um, you know, guys like Brett Nicholas and, and Luke Jackson and Jared Hoying. I mean, guys that were there a couple of years, you know, you, you play that many games together and, and you're in that close of vicinity with each other and you, you come up through the system with each other. You really, you really get to know each other and each other's families and wives and, and uh, you know, coaches like Brad Holman and, and, and Jason Wood. Those guys are, you know, they really cared about you. They really showed a lot of interest in your career. And, and so it was just, it's just so easy to, to, to form those relationships when, when guys are that close and they're, they're spending every day together. Kevin Cash, and now he's managing the big leagues with Tampa Bay and doing a great job. He come over and you know, he got behind the plate and things started changing. Him calling games and the way he handled the games and, and goofy, being the clubhouse funny. And so, I mean, he was a special guy. I still have a relationship, you know, I'll start with the coaches, you know, Bert Hooten, Spike Owen, you know, uh, right on down the line that uh, Mike Maddox came here. It was his first, you know, coaching experience. Now he's at uh, St. Louis Cardinals. He's the big league uh, pitching coach. And it just goes on and on. Uh, Harry Spillman, he was Kansas City. And they really made a better manager out of me. You know, I mean, we had, in my mind, one of the best possible coaching staffs that I've ever been a part of. We had Jackie Moore, the manager. Uh, Harry Spillman is our hitting coach. He's here with us now. But Spike Owen as a bench coach, third base coach. I got Bert Hooten as a pitching coach. So, just the veteran presence they have, their years in the game, their experience. So many, so many incredible teammates throughout those four years. Um, the biggest one that stood out for me was was Mike Coolbaugh. I had the um, pleasure of spending a year with him. Um, back when he was a, a the veteran guy in the clubhouse, I was a young first year AAA guy, and then all all of my kind of draft class that came up together. Todd Self, uh, Jared Gotro, um, Mike Rodriguez, um, just, just to name a few, Mark Sacamano. Um, so we, we were a very close-knit group. Chris Burke was a good friend and still is a good friend of mine. So we played Team USA together a couple years prior and uh, our wives are our friends and our kids are about the same age. So, you know, playing with Chris in Round Rock was, was awesome. And then obviously Jackie and and uh, Mike Maddox, you know, two guys, and then obviously, you know, Spike Owen. We had a phenomenal coaching staff. So, uh, really, all three of those coaches for different reasons. Brad Nelson, uh, big first baseman, DH, uh, Rumi, as I call him. Um, uh, Brad and I were uh, roommates on the road, and, and then our families and wives uh, became uh, became close, and we ended up spending uh, spending a lot of time together. So, Brad is definitely a uh, a teammate when I look back on my years that uh, that comes to mind. Well coaches I, I had I played for Dave Clark and Bobby Jones while I was here. So Bobby, both different personalities. Bobby was a heck of a character. I lo love playing for him. Love playing for, for Clarky as well, the Astros, but uh, teammates. Matt Cada, uh, Chad Tracy, uh, Mark Sacamano when I played here, um, J.R. House. I was close with there too and uh, with the Astros the first time. But a lot, lot of great guys, a lot of great memories here in Round Rock. Dave Clark uh, has a soft spot in my heart because we came up together. Um, him as a manager, me as a player, but I had him in 2005. I had him again in 2006 and this is the, this is the first two years of Corpus Christi. Um, in 07 I moved up, played for Jackie but then in 2008, I was back in Round Rock and Clarkie was moving up to AAA, so he was my manager again for the third time. That also was the year that I got called up. And I got called up in September at the same time, or just a couple days after, they moved up Dave Clark. So we kind of moved up the system together. And it's a funny story. I got a pinch hit the very night I got called up. Um, I was literally late getting there, tucking in my jersey, uh, walking out to the to the foul line to do the national anthem after about a seven day vacation because I was a little bit of a late call up and I get back into the 
the dugout after the national anthem. Uh, Dave Clark is in the dugout. He says, here, we'll go get some, I'll grab you in the second inning. We'll go hit some balls in the cage. Um, so we're walking back. He threw me some balls, got me warmed up. Walking back to the dugout through the tunnel, I was making small talk with him. I was, I was like, Dave, you don't think that they're going to put me in this game or there's no chance I'm going to pinch hit or anything tonight, right? And he said, I don't know. You better be ready. Something to that effect. He basically said, you better be ready. You never know. And I said, uh, well, you know, if I get a, a first pitch, if I get a pinch hit, I'm going to take the first pitch because I haven't seen anything and I'm going to be jittery. And I'm not usually a take the first pitch type of guy. And he said, he looked at me and said, if you get a pinch hit and you get a first pitch fastball, you better be swinging. And I got a pinch hit. I got a first pitch fastball. I swung and hit, hit a home run. So, yeah, good advice. So I got I, I definitely, uh, Dave told me to do anything, I'd probably not question it. I think <clears throat> looking back on that team that I had, Brett Nicholas was one of them, uh, just because he always came to the park uh, happy and willing to work and played the game the right way. And Jared Hoying was a little bit the same way. And, and uh, Ryan Strasberger, who I had coming up through A ball and double A, uh, Ryan Rua, yeah, those, those are the guys that kind of stick out. Those kind of guys that came to the park every day, played hard. You were just, you know, deep down you wanted them to have the chance, and they all got their chance too, so that was kind of cool. Jimmy Reyes was a guy that uh, would toe the rubber each and every day. You'd ask him to do uh, so many different roles when it comes to pitching, and he was there to answer it and, and on top of it every day. And what can I say about Jared Hoying and Brett Nichols? These guys were first class individuals on and off the field. Woody's the man. I had Woody in, in uh, Myrtle Beach and A Ball, I had him in Double A, and obviously in Triple A too. Um, just the way he goes about it, he's consistent. As long as you play the game the right way and you're having fun and just doing the little things right, um, he'll he'll let you do, he'll let you go through slumps, he'll let you ride out hot streaks, he'll uh, he'll put you in the best position to succeed. And I got nothing but praise for Woody. He was great. Uh, Woody, uh, by far, is my, my favorite manager I've, I've ever played with. Uh, tremendous guy to uh, to go out there and suit up and uh, give everything I have for. Um, he's he's just a great communicator. You know, sometimes in AAA that can be the hard part. Uh, you know, guys are coming in, guys are going out so so often, uh, getting called up, getting released. Um, and Jason was the same guy every single day. Um, I was fortunate enough to have him, you know, coming up early on in my in my career, and had him for a few years in uh, in Round Rock. And and man, I would I would do anything for that man. Uh, he uh, was a special manager, and and uh, you know, I think if he asked me to jump, I, I'd jump first, and then ask why afterwards. Uh, no more Mazzara. Uh, he was there for, for a short period of time and you see what he's doing in, in, in Arlington now and it's just it's fantastic. But one moment that really stands out and I think the, the fans will, will appreciate and, and remember this is game one of, uh, of the championship series in 15 is he hit a, a game tying home run to dead center field um, there at the Dell and the place exploded. And to first and to see the, the emotion that Mazzara showed when he hit that home run gives me chills and it gave me chills at the time because he's not a very emotional player but still to this day was one of my favorite moments and, and we went on to win that game. You take a Roy Oswalt that came here just uh, really I needed a one day pitcher and so he came out of uh, Kissimmee, Florida to pitch one game, struck out 17 that night and never went back to Kissimmee and he went from Round Rock, Texas to, uh, to the Houston Astros and from there to the Olympics and so you talk about a success story. One thing that stands out was when I told Ryan Rua that he was going up to the big leagues. And for those that don't know Ryan or who do know him, he's very straight faced, very calm, doesn't show a whole lot of emotion. And, uh, and to his nature, when I told him he was going up to the big leagues, he just kind of cracked a little smile and said, OK, that's cool. You know, when you expect someone to be really happy, that, that just stands out for me. Well, you can imagine, you know, that uh, not only had we just, you know, clinched the uh, championship, you know, Texas League champions, but I knew before the game that once the game was over, I talked to Tim Papura, and he said that uh, when the game's over, we're going to, you know, bring Ginsburg and Ginner up. And so we're out celebrating, you know, that uh, Texas League championship, and now I get a chance to tell them that they're going to the big leagues, to the show as they call it. I have the opportunity to tell them, you know, that uh, they go into the Astros, 
and you can imagine, you know, that uh, their dream just come through. And we were there hugging and whatever, and tears running down our eyes. And so it was a moment that I've always, always cherished. And you go back to, you know, Innsburg, Jason Lane, right on down Roy Oleswalt, Royce Huffman, Brooks Conrad. Just, uh, we had so much talent here. He was genuine. He was genuine was the biggest thing. He, he truly cared about each and every one of his players, and he, he made it known. He was positive. Um, you know, you could hear him every single time in the dugout cheering, you know, and it wasn't just for a show. He was a genuine human being, and he genuinely cared. He was a professional on and off the field, um, you know, and just, just having that feeling that he truly had your best interest in mind and the team's best interest on his mind. Just wanted to make you go out and play hard for the guy. A place that I, I watched my kids grow. I also, I watched the players that, uh, that I had from the Astros. It was a lot of them. It was the first time away from home. And I was kind of their, you know, second dad, you know, their dad away from home. And, and just watch it grow and watch the fans and, and the excitement that it brought to the community. It was more than just a baseball game.